In this video, we will demonstrate how to use Reactors for C to detect and diagnose runtime errors in C code. Reactors for C consists of three major components tester, simulator, and validator. Reactors tester automatically generates input sequences for C code that attempt to maximize code coverage. These input sequences are called tests in Reactors, and multiple tests make up a test suite. In the process of creating such a test suite, Tester also performs checks for a number of hard-to-detect runtime errors, for example memory access violations or overflows. If a problem is found, Tester creates a test that reproduces the problem and saves it in the test suite. A test suite generated by Reactus Tester can be loaded in Reactus Simulator, which works similar to regular debuggers, but offers some advanced features that can be used to diagnose the cause of issues found by Tester. Using Reactus Validator, code can be instrumented with requirements, which are automatically checked during test generation. If requirement violations were found, they can again be analyzed using Reactus Simulator. Before we can start analyzing our code in Reactus for C, we need to inform Reactus about the source files in our project and how to build them. For that, we create a Reactus build file. We can now add our C source files to the build file. For more complex projects, we can also add information about libraries, include directories, and preprocessor definitions. For our small example here, we do not need those. So far, we have informed Reactus about how to build our code, but not how to run it. This is done by creating an execution harness. The harness provides information about the entry function of the code and the variables that are used to provide inputs to and collect outputs from the code. In our example here, the entry function is control loop, its inputs are the sensor and control in variables, and its output is control out. When creating a new harness, Reactus shows us a list of possible entry functions, from which we select the one we identified earlier. We now add the input variables to the harness. Again, Reactus provides us with a list of possibilities. The variables listed here are global variables and parameters of the entry function. We do the same for the output variable. Now that our harness is set up, we can start using our code in Reactus. We will use Reactus Tester to automatically detect problems and if necessary employ a simulator to help diagnose their sources using the test suites generated by Tester. For the purpose of this demonstration about finding bugs, we will just use a set of basic tester parameters. The most important setting here is the output file, which specifies the test suite file that tester will produce. Almost immediately after starting, tester shows a report of the first problem that was detected. The error message states that an overflow has occurred. We can click the highlight button to see the location in the code. We can also see from the error message that the overflow occurred when casting to int 16 type. Additionally, the error message gives us the values of all currently visible variables, including the value of x. We can see how the result of the calculation will be outside of the proper int 16 range. It turns out we forgot to apply the proper scaling in our calculation. Reactus for C currently does not have an integrated editor for C code, but it can be easily set up to use any editor installed on the system. Once set up, the editor can be started with a simple button press. After changes have been made to the code, Reactus needs to reload the project. Note that in this case, the error message from Tester was sufficient to diagnose the problem. We did not have to use Simulator. We are now ready to start Tester again to look for more problems. This time, Tester reports an assertion failure. 
clicking highlight takes us to the location in the code and we can see that a call to a C assert macro has failed. Since it is not obvious why the mode variable is not in its proper range, we will use simulator to get more details. We start simulator and load the test suite generated by tester. Now we can run the test suite which will reproduce the exact conditions that caused the problem in tester. We indeed get the same error report. Adding mode as a watched variable shows us that its current value is 3. We can open a scope to see the changes to the value of mode over time. The time value in this scope increases with each call to the code's entry function. One call to the entry function corresponds to one major execution step. Mode was supposed to flip back to zero after two, so something went wrong. If we take a closer look at the details when hovering over mode, we can see that it was last modified in line 116. We go back in our execution sequence until mode goes back to 2 and then set a breakpoint in line 116 to see what exactly happened. Execution of the next major time step stops at the breakpoint. We can see that mode is still 2. Executing a minor simulation step will advance to the next line we can see that mode has increased to 3. The next two lines were supposed to reset mode, but as we can see, the condition here is wrong. We have found the source of the problem and can fix it. We start tester again to find more problems. This time test case generation completes without errors. Let's look more closely at the code coverage that we have achieved. Simulator can highlight code according to coverage achieved by the steps it has so far executed. Types of coverage tracked by Reactus include statement, condition, decision, and MCDC coverage. Uncovered targets are shown in red. Currently, nothing is covered since we have not yet executed any steps. After executing the steps from the test suite generated by Tester, we can see the coverage highlighting change. For example, notice the highlighting changes in line 18. The if statement turned black the first time it was executed. The highlighting of the expression within the if statement gives more details about condition and decision coverage. The thick red bar over the first condition disappeared, meaning this condition has evaluated to true at least once. The thin red bar over the whole decision also disappeared, meaning that the decision has evaluated to true. The remaining thick and thin bars indicate what has not yet been covered. We can get information about when a target was covered by hovering. The notation here means that the target was covered in the sixth step of the first test. We can get information about MCDC coverage by right-clicking on a decision or condition. This table provides an overview of the condition, decision, and MCDC coverage for the expression. We can also see a quick summary of all coverage information for the code. In addition to tracking coverage, Reactus also does a static analysis of the code to determine parts of code that are unreachable. We can see here that indeed a number of statements are reported as unreachable. Reactus helps us locate unreachable targets by highlighting them purple in the code. It looks like the LUT apply function is never called. Let's investigate that.
Obviously there is a call here, but the call itself is unreachable. We can infer from the coverage highlighting that the else branch is unreachable because Reactus has determined that flag 2 can never become true. And also that Reactus was not able to cover lines 135 through 137, so for some reason flag 1 never becomes true. Hovering over flag 1 shows us that it was last modified at line 81, so we continue our investigation there. Here we can see the problem. Flag 1 is assigned both the values of x1 and x2, but we meant to assign x2 to flag 2. Since a portion of our code has just become reachable now, we should test it again. Tester reports that the code attempted to read an uninitialized variable. Highlighting shows us where the error occurred, but we will need simulator to investigate. Hovering confirms that the variable was not initialized at the time the error occurred. Coverage highlighting shows us that neither line 22 nor 24 have been executed. Looking at the input x and the limits in the conditions shows that i is not initialized because x is less than the minimum. We are missing an initializer for i to deal with this case. We go back to tester to find more problems. This time tester reports a memory error. Highlighting points us to line 27, and the error message shows us that we were attempting to read from a block of memory just outside of its valid address range. After reproducing the error in simulator, we can see by hovering over i that we were attempting to access LUTY data with an index of 5. According to the error message, this was just outside the valid range of the LUTY data array, so the maximum valid index value must be 4. We were one off with our computation for the index. Since only the branch in line 22 has been executed, we can conclude that the problem lies there. After a bit of consideration, we can see that we forgot to subtract 1 in this line. Back to tester and on to the next error. We find another memory error. This time the code is reading memory that was dynamically allocated but not initialized. Let's look at this in simulator. Hovering over i shows that apparently index 999 of LUTY data is not initialized. Hovering over LUTY data shows that the array was created in line 23 of source file control.c. We will now set a breakpoint at that location to investigate the initialization of the LUTY data array. We 
we reset the execution to the start and run it again, stopping at the breakpoint. Hovering over LUTN shows us that the array was created with a size of 1000 elements. The initialization of the array's elements happens in lines 32 through 36. We advance the execution past the initialization. Hovering over the iteration variable i shows us that the initialization loop exited before initializing the last element. So we need to fix the end condition of our loop. We check for more errors. This time we get a temporal memory error. This happens if memory is accessed after it has already been freed. In our case the error message tells us that we were attempting to read a local variable y after the function in which it was defined has already returned. This kind of problem often happens when using pointers to local variables. Highlighting again takes us to line 27. Obviously there is no access to a variable y here as mentioned in the error message. The only operation that references memory is the access of the LUT y data array. The variable name in the error message refers to the name of the variable that originally occupied the memory area that is now being accessed. We do get the additional information that y was defined in line 63 of source file control.c so we look there. Y is indeed defined as a local array here in function set LUT mode 0. Looking further down in the function shows us that Y gets assigned to LUT Y data. We found the problem. We are assigning a pointer to the local variable Y to LUT Y data and then are using that pointer after set LUT mode 0 returns. We meant to define Y as static. Let's check our code again. Tester finds no more errors. Reactus for C has helped us detect and diagnose a number of typical runtime errors that would typically be very hard to debug. Reactus for C has a multitude of other features for tracking code coverage and code validation that go beyond the scope of this video. To try Reactus for C, just sign in on our website, download the software, and request a trial license. Thank you for watching Finding Bugs in C Code using Reactus for C.